Welcome back to Subculture on CentralCoastRadio.com. Well, there is a very, very big production on in Melbourne at the moment, a theatre production, I mean. It is called 222, A Ghost Story, and it is on for a very, very limited time. But this is an amazing performance, and uh, Kyle and I went along and checked it out the other night, so we thought we would tell you a little bit um, about it. So it this is the production that you've probably heard about from... Um, the UK and the USA where um, a lot of people went along and a lot of people got very, very frightened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the best way to put it. But uh, mm. basically this production tells the story of two couples, uh, Sam played by Remy High and uh, Jenny played by Gemma Ward have just bought this old house and are modernizing it. Um, now, Jenny has just been left alone by Sam while Sam goes off on a research assignment um, with their with their baby, which I believe is about nine months old. And uh, she's struggled in that time that he's been away because every night at 2.22, paranormal things happen inside the house. Now, on this night that Sam has returned, she throws together a, a, like a dinner party um, with which Sam's best friend, Lauren, played by Ruby Rose, comes over and brings her brand new partner, Ben, played by Daniel McPherson. Now, as Jenny starts to talk about what's been happening with the paranormal activity in their house, soon everybody is weighing in and has an opinion on what is happening inside this house. Now, mate, this is um, one of those plays that a lot of people have been talking about from right around the world and saying, how this has changed the face of theatre forever. How did you find the Australian production of 222, A Ghost Story? I I really liked it. Um, yeah, uh, Danny Robbins' stage play, like it, it's had made quite a quite a splash in uh, pretty much since COVID. It's one of the first major shows to come out since 2020. Um, that's kind of having. Uh, I believe it's had four or five different revivals in the UK. It's had one in LA and now this one in is the Australian premiere. Um, I believe that they're, they're, they've all been directed by, I mean, they're all written by Danny Robbins, but uh, I believe they've all been directed by Matthew Dunster. Uh, so the Australian one's actually been directed by him as well. So they all, um, they've all remained faithful to, basically the original even though they've all gotten uh different different casts in them uh no I, I really enjoyed it i was kind of curious how a horror or thriller kind of stage show would be done on stage because i'm kind of still new to the theater at the moment and so i was thinking how could they make without all the bells and whistles that that hollywood movies have how could they make basically a ghost story on stage and how could they make it actually kind of freaky that and it actually does a really good job of that um especially in the in the second act uh the mood really starts getting um uh really intense uh the um the sound design that's been that's been done in it by uh in dickinson that actually got a um a Laurence Olivier nomination, yep, uh, for the UK one, and it and it's the same kind of sound design again, same director and all, and so that really sets the scene and really kind of puts you in that mood. And as you're watching it, like I was starting to see things like they in on the on the stage. There's kind of like a patio door in the back, and I think I was seeing reflections of the actors um at one point in the in the patio door in the back and i was thinking that there was pete there was things walking around in the backyard of the yep. set and it was like i was kind of free like i was getting freaked out like my mind was actually playing tricks on me watching this stage show so yeah, yeah I, I was really impressed by it what did what did you think of it david yeah i really really loved it like I, i'd been told that um it looks like a horror film on stage mm. and i was like you i was thinking how the hell do they do that but it really does feel like you're watching a paranormal activity movie playing out in front of you like that mm. that famous franchise but i think what has kind of set this theater production apart from other theater productions is 
wherever it's gone right around the world, it's always been able to attract a top-notch cast. Of course, in, oh, definitely. Um, yeah. in the UK, it was Lily Allen um, going onto the theatre that, that had everybody talking. And then people like Sophia Bush have um, jumped into it. And I think that's what kind of stunned me here in Australia. Like when I heard that they were bringing it to Australia, I was expecting it to be kind of the usual suspects of Australian theatre. But um, I think the first announcement here was that Daniel McPherson was going to be in mm. it. And I'm like, I'm a big Daniel McPherson fan. Um, I watched Neighbours, of course, when I was growing up, but I was also a big fan of uh, The Bill uh, when he went across to that and also City Homicide um, uh, and and shows like that. And when they first announced that he was in it, I was like, wow, I need to go and see this. And then I think the next announcement was Ruby Rose. And I was like, are they joking? Like... <laughs> First of all, how are they going to get Ruby Rose to do theatre? Because, of course, she's known for big blockbuster films. But then the thought that mm. she was going to be here in Melbourne on stage, it was like, this is amazing. And then um, Gemma Ward, who um, is in a bunch of movies that I've loved over the years, she was named um, as part of it as well. And then um, Remy High, who I had the pleasure of meeting um, at a convention a few years ago, it was like, they've put together this absolutely amazing cast as well. So it was really drawing me in, but I don't even think that ex made me ready for what actually happened when I sat there watching it on stage, because not only have you got four top notch performers, but this is an absolutely amazing script. Um, this script goes all over the place um, from not only setting up the paranormal activity in the house, but the dialogue, between them like the relationship between sam and lauren you you get a strong feeling that there's a lot of unresolved stuff there mm. um but also the way the characters change i mean at the start i really didn't like ben um i found myself thinking oh man this is a bit of a, a narcissist that's rocked up to this dinner party but then by the end of it i think he was one of my favorite characters um <laughs> like there was so much room for movement um in that script and we should also point out that the script has been, I guess you'd call it Aussie-fied. Um, yeah, Australian Australianized. Well. Yeah. So there's like mentions of Melbourne suburbs and things like that. And Eddie Perfect actually had a hand in doing that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's like they have crossed everything off because sometimes you go and see a play and they'll be talking about like uh, New York suburbs or LA suburbs and it doesn't mean a hell of a lot to you if you're listening to that in Melbourne because you don't get a feel. Um, whereas in this one, when they mention places like Frankston, you know straight away what kind of mm. suburb they're talking about. So I think that really helps as well. But uh, even the stage itself, like the the way it's set up, it's just, it looks amazing. It makes you feel as an audience like you're there at that dinner party. Hmm. That's I, I really... Enjoy. I, I thought that the stage and all was really great. I did think that the, um I had mentioned this. Uh, I, I know it's just a a uh, logistics issue with with the stage itself. Um, that the Her Majesty's Theatre stage might be just a little bit tall for this show. Yeah. Um. At least, I mean, like saying, it's, it's much. It, it's kind of suited for more like lavish productions, like Aladdin and uh, Mary Poppins and stuff. But rather than this kind of domestic setting, but I mean, still the like the the set design in this, like regardless of that, the the set design in this, uh, it perfectly kind of blended the 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 idea that this was an old house that was being trans basically gentrified into yep. um yeah and like and that was kind of those are the themes that the that the movie uh, that the show we yeah, about to say movie because it was as good of a good as a movie um but yeah it kind of it tackles those kind of themes like social class warfare and gentrification and and all those kind of things that like you would kind of expect a group of 30 somethings to kind of be debating with each other over the course of the night of of drinks and 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 talk and um i i also i really did like that there's this i mean the the play is 222 222 is basically the countdown of what what the show is building towards and there's this massive red clock on the on the wall that it, like the, the show is slowly it, it's counting up 
to that time, but it's also like in 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 another way, it's kind of counting down to it. And yeah, it's just every time that there's a scene change or like a skip in in time, there's this basically a jump scare. Yeah, and. mood the entire time and it does such a such a good job of it um i really i was uh i wasn't as familiar with uh as many of the actors that are in it as you were i know you were uh it was like all four of the actors in it you were you were a huge fan of um i know uh ruby rose of course i know i know her so i was kind of interested to see how she would do in it because this is her um I believe this is her debut on the stage. Like it's the first time she's actually done any kind of like stage performance. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she was really good in it. I thought, um, yeah, just, I mean, the whole cast really were, but yeah, I was just kind of um, really impressed by her performance. And it is this kind of this woman that's um, like, she's struggling with a lot of things. Like you can tell throughout the, throughout the show, she's the one that's drinking the most and she's getting more and more <laughs> more and more trashed as the as the night goes on and like her emotions and stuff are coming are more coming out and yeah just the just the dynamic between all the characters i thought was really was really great yeah. <laughs> sorry it's getting a phone call there but um yeah it was <laughs> interesting it was interesting how the four of them actually came together like that because mm. they came together um so well like with the four they've got four very different backgrounds as actors um as a start so you end up like thinking how's this going to work but it ends up working really really brilliantly well because the the four of them all bring in the different kinds of acting i think we saw a lot more from remy high than what we actually expected or what mm. i expected um being one of the younger members of the cast and um, not having some of the experience like he's been in big films but I think we kind of expected that um, he would be that younger kind of version of like all the other characters but he ends up yeah. doing such an amazing um, job in it as well just going mm. back to what you said though about the height of the theater I think one of the things that did help do was enhance that um, effect that they were using for the um for the skylight there's a couple of times uh, where they go to look at the stars through the skylight i think that actually enhanced it i don't think if it was a a smaller set like at melbourne theater company or something like that that you would get that same kind of uh, effect from it because the skylight was fine it's just the rest of the roof was like a mile up <laughs> like yeah just because it because it is such a massive stage it's like width wise uh on the wings of the stage like it was perfect that way it's just the height wise that was just the one thing it was kind of like it it kind of almost dwarfed the actors um in this kind of like this domestic situation i thought but again it's it's the type of it's a type of stage that it is i mean this it would be packed the the, the if it was playing at malthouse or, or smaller theater then that would be too small for the audience. Like there's so many people going to be coming to go see, coming to see this. I mean, opening night, it was, it was packed opening night. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a real hit for the, uh, the, the Australian version. I thought, I, I really liked, I thought that they really localized it uh, really well as well. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's an absolutely amazing production. If you want to go along and see, exactly what can happen with modern day theater uh go along and check this out because it is an amazing script and um a brilliant cast that all come together amazingly well um was there anything that you wanted to say to, to wrap up your thoughts on this one uh nope nope that's great i i'd, I'd say they they did a, a brilliant job of being able to um really keep you on the edge of your seat in ways that a lot of uh thriller movies with all the Hollywood magic 
don't manage to do. So yeah, if if, if you're if you're doubting that this is going to scare you, then yeah, go see it because <laughs> yeah, just just see what it's it, it's it's not for the faint of heart, I guess. Definitely, it, there are some jump scares, but apart mm. from that, like I said before, it is a brilliant um script that really explores mm. um how people feel about the paranormal as well. So uh, go along and check out 222, A Ghost Story in Melbourne, because this is a modern day theatre classic. You are listening to centralcoastradio.com.